you know, out here fishing on the Elite Series, you learn to be versatile. And uh, I used to hate spinner rods. I mean, I used to, couldn't stand them. You'd, you'd put, you know, six, eight, 10 pound test line on a spinner rod and you go down the bank and next thing you know, you're just, it's just cooling off your reel. It's just a big old mess. And then you had to have, you know, long spinner rods, short spinner rods for, short for skipping docks, long for throwing, you know, uh, shake your heads and things out on long points. Man, today I've got one setup. You know, I might have three or four spinner rods, but I got one setup. It's a 610 Ducket Fishing White Eye Series that, that actually, uh, I have my name on it because it's the rod that I like to use. Um, it's a medium heavy action rod and I can do everything with it. I put braid, 10 pound braid on it. It don't matter if I'm skipping docks, if I'm throwing a, a wacky rig, if I'm throwing a shaky head, a drop shot, throwing a jerk bait, well, you name it. I can do everything with this one rod. All I do is change my leader size as to what the application is. So I don't have to carry seven or eight spinner rods in my rod box anymore. I can carry two or three, and no matter what I'm faced with, I can get the job done. So the braid never messes up on a reel. It's just, uh, you can put braid on your spinner reel, and it's good for the year. You know, I, they'll give me all the line I want. I never change my braid out. I just, I put it on the first of the year and take it off at the end of the year. It's just, uh, it never goes bad. As a matter of fact, the longer you use it, the better it becomes. It becomes a lot limper, easier to fish with, and, and it's just, you never break it. So um, that's almost every pro out here uses braid on their spinner reels now. It's really helped me a lot on the manageability of a spinner rod, and, and it gives you a lot more confidence fishing. You got better feel, you can create a lot more distance when you're casting with it. Just everything about it's just so much better. You know, when it comes to reel size on a spinner rod, I, like, I prefer the Lose Tournament Pro 2000. That's what I like because I'm using braid. It's 10 pound braid, but it's a diameter of two pound test line. So I can put a hundred and, I don't know, 200 yards of braid on here. Your spool, like I made a full cast just a second ago. I still got a full spool of line. So this reel is very small, very light, and it's not you know big hanging down in your hand. So I like something light, small. You're finesse style fishing. You're, you're fishing very light stuff. So you got a lot better feel with this and, and you can make a very, very long cast because the diameter of the braid is so small, it just don't ever matter. Before, you used to use big big hub spool reels because your fluorocarbon or your, your mono wouldn't come off a small spool reel near as good so you couldn't cast as far, but with braid, it don't matter. So you can lighten up, go small, and man, this is the deal. You know, one thing I see guys do wrong the most when it comes to braid with a fluorocarbon leader is a lot of times they don't run a long enough leader. Now, if you're fishing shallow water situations, you know, five, six feet of water, it really don't matter. But what happens is braid floats, fluorocarbon sinks. So if you're out there fishing, say 20, 25, 30 feet of water, and you've got a five foot leader, what happens is that braid will actually float through the water column, creates a bow in your line, and it affects the action of your bait. So if you're fishing deep, you, you wanna run 25 to a 30 foot leader. A lot of times is what I'll do. And I've seen it make big, big differences I've been fishing around people on the Elite Series and catching them and they're not. And the whole difference is they got too short a leader. So always remember if you're fishing deep, make sure you got a long leader on. You know, I've, I became a pretty good finesse fisherman. Uh, coming from Florida, you know, you think about heavy grass flipping and, and power fishing. But I might be from Florida, but I fish outside of Florida like way more than I fish in Florida anymore. So you fish whatever you're faced with and you become better at it because you do it every day. So I fish so much so much finesse style stuff around the country anymore uh, because that's just what that's what we're faced with you know you come to a clear water deep clear water lake that's got spotted bass smallmouth bass you gotta learn to fish that that way and you know over time you just become better at it because you practice it every day you gotta you gotta be prepared and finesse fishing i don't care where you go you could be at okeechobee you better have some kind of finesse style technique in your boat because there's tournaments that you that you feel like you can win and there's tournaments you gotta you gotta survive in so you can you gotta generate bites before you can weigh fish in. And there's not a better way to generate a bite than finesse style fishing. You know, you can catch a lot of fish, you know, finesse style fishing, but you can also catch big fish doing it. You know, you're not gonna to go to like a Toho or Okeechobee and put a spinning rod in your hand and win, but you're gonna catch fish. So when the, when the conditions get tough, say a cold front rolls in and the bite's real, real tough, you might see me down there with a spinning rod, you know? I might flip a lot, because that's how I feel like I'm gonna catch the bigger fish, but as the day goes on and I'm like, oh man, it's just 12 o'clock, I don't have but three, I'll pick up a spinner rod and go, you know, catch catch five and then go back to flipping or whatever you need to do. So you always, always, always wanna have one of these in your boat, no matter where you go.